Okay. My seed order finally came in, but they got a lot of orders this time of year, so it took a little while for them to pack and ship it. It was no problem for them, them to ship it here, so that was really great. And I got some exciting varieties that I couldn't find in shops here. And it was a very dangerous website for me to be on because they had literally everything. So I only spent 25 euros, which was pretty good. So what I want to do today is um, sow a bunch of these and talk to you about gardening. Just some general t tips for gardening and some more specific tips for gardening here in Portugal. Because I've noticed that it's for some reason kind of complicated for a lot of people. Or a lot of people move here like us without any experience in gardening and so they're kind of like thrown for a lo loop of what to do. So I want to talk you through a few of the basics that I've learned over the years. I'm now going into my fifth summer here so I think I finally have a little bit of grasp on what I'm doing and what's going on here specifically in our region. Um, what works well for me and might work well for you. It's, all, it, it's only now after a few years that I feel like I can actually give you advice instead of doing it one season and then building a whole course around it and selling that to you. Uh, good information is always free in my opinion. Today it is the end of January, it's the last day of January actually and it's still pretty early um, to start planting things to start seeding things but the spring and summer kind of creeps up on you here very quickly um, we kind of only have two seasons we have winter and summer and then two weeks in between in between where it's nice and like mild and then bam you're into winter or bam you're into summer so it's not too early and for our region specifically apparently the official final frost date is around this time so I'm not too scared of starting things and then if I really have to I can just put things in the greenhouse or I am in the greenhouse now it is a little bit cooler here so if I want to protect them from some frost I can just take them into the yurt or take them into my neighbor's greenhouse which is a little bit more up the hill and not as cold as here yeah hello um this is my always opinionated garden cat called Antoinette. Yeah, she's coming to check up on my work. Um, so let's start with the basics. A question that I see a lot is where do you find organic seeds? Well, for the last few years, there has been this company and they've been kind of scaling everything, which has been great to see. Um, and they're called Cementes Vivas. I'm not sponsored by them talk about the sponsor of today's video in a later in a little bit um, but they are an organic certified company here in the region in Idania Nova um, and they do lots of organic seeds uh, it's it has been a hit or miss over the last few years with some things doing really well some things not so much um, but I think that was also partially due to them just kind of being a starting business and they do the whole um what's it called biodynamic thing which i'm not really a fan of but i mean they're organic seeds so that's great um they also have a website with uh, like a sewing calendar and things so if you're looking for more specific um, or like an overview of when you can start planting things. They have a great guide on their website that you can just look at for free. And then they obviously also have on the back here of the pack um, when uh, if you can sow them in trays, sow it directly and then what kind of um, point of the year you can do that. But you have to remember with that kind of thing that it's an average for the whole country. It's a long and diverse country with lots of different, even per region or per square kilometer, lots of different microclimates. So you have to keep in mind where you are growing specifically and what that means for temperatures and um, 
yeah just like averages for you specifically and not just think okay i can sew beads in the middle of summer and they'll be fine from my experience it's just way too hot in the middle of summer to sew beads so yeah even though it says so on the pack i wouldn't bother and maybe that's different in different parts of the country maybe you can get away with it if you're closer to the coast or if you're more up north where it's a little bit less hot and dry than here but here specifically we are in the castello branco district i wouldn't bother so you kind of have to use your own discernment when it comes to planting times which brings me to my next point when it comes to planting times you can definitely at least here in our district castello branco you can definitely be too late with planting um which means that i'm starting now and like i said summer just kind of it's here and then it's hot and probably too warm for things to get established so after may even though you can buy the plants at the market even though you can even though it says so on the pack that you potentially could do those things looking at the forecast as well i wouldn't bother um to plant things in the dead of summer because it's just too hot and um at least in our clay soil it gets too like hot and dry and compacted for things to get established enough so that they don't um, want to die in the heat it's only now that i'm realizing that this shot is actually very terrible because it's very messy but um that's my life it's my greenhouse um for now i'm gonna plant tomatoes mostly because from my experience it's all right to plant them now and then i can start planting them out at the end of march here in the greenhouse and then throughout april um, out in the garden and they'll be fine and the general rule for seeding if you're growing from seed is six to eight weeks before you want to plant things out and that of course depends on the plant specifically um, because some things grow really quickly in the trays and then you can just put them in the garden and they'll be fine things like tomatoes and peppers and aubergines they need a little bit longer so six to eight, eight weeks for those things the cats are fighting um is a good, good rule of thumb and then over the years you'll learn what on average is a good time to plant out in your specific garden so i'm going to start with that after a trial and error i have come to the conclusion that this is my favorite kind of tray they are big enough that they don't like they're not immediately overcrowded in the tray like they don't get root bound within a week after coming up and they're not so big like these like they don't have a million cells like these styrofoam ones that you just end up planting too many seeds and you have too many plants and no place to put it a styrofoam tray like this is it just has too many holes if you're doing a garden just for your own family maybe if you're trying to do literally everything you eat this is a good idea if you're just trying to do a garden like me where you want to eat fresh from the garden and preserve if you have the time uh, this kind of tray is really good um, they're hard black plastic so they're pretty durable as well and yeah that's just my conclusion and then after if the tomatoes need potting up i will use these um that i bought for like 10 15 cents which was an investment but then you can use those year after year for germination and thus for planting seeds i use this kind of compost and you're looking specifically for german asal, um, which means germination and that is usually a finer type of compost where they kind of taken out all the clumps you can make your own seed starting compost i have friends who do that but i don't bother so as you can see there are no real clumps in here it's just a fine fine compost um i put the compost in dry 
because uh, just straight out of the bag because that's how I like to do it. I've also seen people who like make it wet first and then put it in the tray. I put it in the tray and then I make it wet and that's just fine. Do whatever works for you. Which um, brings me to another thing I wanted to say. I think I've probably said it before, um, but you don't necessarily need to grow from seed. Here in Portugal, um, especially in the more um, rural areas like where we are, it's so easy to just buy starts. They're, they're usually really cheap. You get like 10 for a euro at agricultural shops. Um, the big one in Castelo Branco is called Agriloja, which is where I also buy these trays and the compost and things. But usually in villages, they'll have a little agricultural shop where you can buy feed and seeds and starts and plants and things. So while it is great to um, grow from seed and in theory you could save a little bit of money on that um, on your garden all the old people here they they grow from starts um, I buy some starts like the um, like the big heart-shaped tomatoes the traditional uh, Portuguese tomato I just buy those as starts in the fall I buy brassica starts so cabbages and broccolis and things because it's impossible for me to start those here um, it's just too hot it's great to start to start seeds and it's fun but if it's if it is stressing you out if you're just starting out and you're like I don't know what to do it's totally fine it's actually really great that it, you're able to do that just take out the step of seed starting because it's like one piece of the puzzle that you can outsource really easily you can get really good starts around here so like why wouldn't you do that is my opinion i know it is exciting and fun but i do see a lot of people who start out with the whole dream and they buy all the seeds and then they don't know what to do next and then th those just go to waste so just buy some starts it's it's all right it's easy you're still a gardener if you do that um i think i'm gonna start watering these two okay while we wait for that water to soak into the compost i want to talk to you about today's sponsor nordvpn you might remember a couple videos ago i talked about uh, working with NordVPN. We talked about the importance of internet security and the different features that they offer for that. And those are very important, of course. But a VPN also allows for some more fun things like watching your favorite TV shows. As you know, we moved countries five years ago, but we still like to watch Dutch TV shows from time to time. Our favorite shows are often blocked from being viewed in other countries, so we use NordVPN to get around that. With NordVPN, you can select from a long list of different countries, unlocking all the content you might want to watch. So if you are interested in trying out all the different features that NordVPN has to offer, you can take advantage of our special partnership with NordVPN. You can click the link in the description box or the pinned comment to get four bonus months on a two-year plan. With our exclusive code RPortuguese, you can enjoy this offer. Again, check out nordvpn.com slash RPortuguese to get an extra four bonus months. NordVPN has a 30-day money-back guarantee, so it's risk-free for everyone. Okay, and now let's get back to the seeds. I have a few new varieties and I'm gonna plant a few old varieties because I just like to mix things up. Um, since I'm only here for like five years, I'm still kind of trying to figure out which varieties I actually like, which ones want to grow here well, um, all that kind of stuff. So it's, I stick with some, some favorites and then I usually add a variety or two uh, in the mix to see how that does and how we like the taste and that kind of thing. I'm gonna move back here. You're just gonna be here. 
and I'll stop talking about the struggles of being a YouTuber. Okay, so for tomato, it means that I chose two new varieties on this Dutch website. I chose Cherokee Green Pear, which is a medium-sized tomato, about 100 grams. It's green. It sounded fun and exciting. And then the other um, I always want to try new um, cherry tomato varieties, so I chose Blue Pits. They had like a bunch of different blue, blue cherry tomato varieties, um, and I just chose this one. Then for peppers, a new variety I'm trying is this one. Um, this was sent to me by a viewer. A sweet pepper that's a little bit elongated. They're red if they're ripe. By the way, you can no longer send anything to us in our P.O. box. This arrived at our P.O. box. Um, we closed it down because it just wasn't worth it for us anymore. So you shouldn't send us anything there anymore. Then next up, a new pack. Because someone last year sent me a couple packs of these Jean Flum. I've grown them a few times. They're a great yellow to orange kind of tomato that has that's really sweet so it's actually like you're eating fruit it's amazing so i'm excited it didn't really do well last year so i'm hoping it'll do well this year and that's the kind of thing here also or just with the gardening in general sometimes one thing does amazing the next next year is just a total bust so i like to plant a, a few different varieties just so that i'm insured of a crop um for example last year i had a ton of broccoli bought the same starts from the same guy barely any broccoli this year it's just how it goes sometimes um Last year I planted these peppers, um, the plants did okay until uh, the heat and after the heat as you saw, so I'm going to try them again. A favorite cherry tomato variety last year was uh, the yellow submarine, they're like a pear shaped yellow tomato. That was really delicious, the kids really liked it. Last year, because Bo was barely two at the time, it was kind of hard for him to know which ones you should eat at which stage. So we had some red ones and some yellow ones and he could just couldn't see the difference. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's uh, one thing you have to deal with with small kids. Uh, Pick already knows all the different varieties. Uh, so she knows, oh yeah, these are the yellow ones, these are really good. Um, and she was teaching Bo as well, but <laughs> you can only do so much. Um, I don't really do any planning. Um, I'm just not a planner. If that's something that you're into, that's great. Definitely do that. I would recommend doing a little bit of planning. I just can't do it. So I don't. Long time viewers might know that one of our favorites, or one of my favorites, is the Fiorentino, um, which is like a funky looking tomato that has great flavor and does well here for me. And it's kind of like they get about this big. So the good medium sized tomato. And then a red variety I like to plant is this one. They're not my favorite to eat, but they're great for drying. So if I want to do drying, I could. And otherwise the kids just eat them, they don't mind. Pook is already excited to, for there to be tomatoes again. She's complaining that there are no tomatoes, but I don't buy tomatoes in winter because they just don't taste great. And then for this year, I'm gonna do these varieties again. Last year I did, did these for the eggplants. You can pause it to read it properly. Um, they're both like a little bit longer and thinner, uh, which I liked. And then um, for a big one, I'm doing Black Beauty because I found the seeds. Uh, they are out of date, but most seeds, even in like not ideal conditions for storage, they do well. Um, they'll have a lower germination rate than ideal but they'll be fine. And so 
And then I just showed you, these are the peppers. Okay, all the tomatoes and things are planted. What else I got, I will share with you another day when I'm planting those. For now, I want to move on to flowers and to random other things. So, first thing I want to plant is that this Fazelia. I'm gonna go crazy with this stupid clip on. In Dutch, it's called Bijenbrood, brood, bee bread, and the bees love it. So I'm gonna sow a bunch of those for in the garden to attract bees. I got these seeds, which are Snapdragon. I'm very excited about these. Um, I hope I'm still on time enough because apparently they like. So many opinions from chickens. Um, apparently they like it's a little bit colder and it's already starting to get warmer. So I'm hope I'm I hope I still am on time. Um, I want to try growing hibiscus. We'll see. This is a more tropical plant and it is quite dry here in the summer. So we'll see how it does. Um, Martin got me these seeds the other day just a pretty flower and then I also have things like zinnias and cosmos those will they those grow so quickly um, and they like it a little bit warmer so I also I'll sow them a few weeks before hello Bo I'll, I'll show them sow them a few weeks before I want to start planting out things just so that they don't that they're not stuck in trays forever. Oh, yes, man. our toddler does have screen time. And then the two random things that I want to plant is um, these. I, I have no idea what the English word is for them, but they're like garlic, whatever. Okay, um, I'm gonna leave this off. Hello. And um some artichokes because i want to try again with artichokes so and while i do that um i'm gonna answer some of the questions that you asked last year um when i made a community post about this video so a question that i ask get asked a lot is how much of um our own food we grow um, I find it very hard to put a percentage onto that because that requires math and thinking. I'm not really the kind of headspace I am in right now. Um, but I'll talk a little bit more about what my goal is with gardening. So since I'm still learning, like this is only my fifth growing season, I think it's really important to remind you, if you're just starting out as well, to not like overexert yourself immediately which means like don't try to grow every single thing straight away and if people are saying that that they're growing everything they eat like within the first year i can tell you they're lying or they have help or they have a bunch of investment money or um like previous experience for the first time grower that's really unrealistic so i would say start small uh we started pretty small and then um yeah just keep adding on and kind of finding what is a happy um happy amount of space and plants for us my goal with with the garden is mostly to eat fresh from the garden year round because i did a pretty good fall winter patch we have been able to do that also in the last few months which has been really great um, i can just usually just walk down and get myself some cabbage leaves and that kind of thing but again like last last winter was my first winter garden my fall, first fall winter garden that i really tried and then we had like maybe half of our vegetables from from the garden so start small kind of 
get the feel for it, see if you actually like doing the work because there's also no shame in saying, oh, I just want to keep a small, like a bunch of tomatoes and some cucumbers and that's fine. That's enough for me. If that's you, cool, like just do that and don't try to like overexert yourself and try all these things because you feel like you need to because it's just like it's a lot of work and it's not for everyone so you really need to like enjoy doing it i think because there always will be other people in your community hopefully growing food and you can just buy from them so uh, yeah i don't know what kind of percentage i can put on it but i can say that at least for the last year most of our vegetables have come from the garden um, right now I still buy onions and carrots but I also planted onions in the fall so we'll see how much that puts a dent in our onion buying uh, situation but I think I'll just always have to buy carrots because I don't need a very big carrot field <laughs> for our carrot needs and that's fine uh, I, I feel no shame in that um, and the kids love eating carrots especially pook so um, yeah I just buy them that's totally fine what's your top five fruits top five vegetables top five herbs you always have in your garden as basic essentials um, long time viewers might know that one of my essentials is parsley parsley because we don't like coriander it tastes disgusting to all of us so that's great we don't have a, a feud about that in our family oops that's a lot i think these garlic ch garlic chives that's the word i was looking for i think those might be good for us um for potato salads and that kind of thing i like growing mint um do keep it in pots because it wants to go everywhere i like doing the tomatoes they're just so much nicer from the garden i like I keep trying for cucumbers but because they're like a great snack. I like eggplants as well. Um, they've been a little bit more challenging to grow. Um, I love fava beans, uh, broad beans in British English. Um, those are great. Love them. Really easy to grow because you grow them over the winter basically. Um, and they just do, uh, they just do their thing. This is your reminder to label your seed starting. Okay, uh, I think that's five. And then for fruits, um, our friends, they live in Dao area and there's so many fruit farms, like that's where they grow all the stone fruit of Portugal. It's really amazing there. And so I love their cherries. Um, they do great peaches um, and then I personally also love um, plums and berries, like blueberries, blackberries, uh, cherries. <laughs> I think everyone loves those. So that's, yeah, they're great friends to have. Everyone needs friends who grow <laughs> all the fruit in the world. Okay, let's do these. Snapdragons. What grows sur slash survives during s heat of summer? Um, so it can get really hot here, especially, um, oops, that's probably way too much. Um, especially July, August, there's lots of possibilities for it being easily 40 degrees for a, a few days in a row. And that's really rough on plants. Uh, tomatoes will stop, will stop pollinating. Um, most plants will just be in survival mode. Um, so... Yeah, the things that will survive are tomatoes, aubergines, peppers. They'll survive okay-ish. And then things like green beans. No chance for that here. So they're more of a spring crop for me. Your typical summer vegetable will be okay. But like I usually have a little bit in August where I just don't have any tomatoes coming in. Because the plants just stopped producing. They stopped pollinating. Um, they're just on a little break. Um, which is fine. Snap a dragon. Very exciting. Such pretty flowers. So I plant uh, flowers and I keep planting more 
different varieties of flowers because they're great to attract pollinators and it's also really good to just have some beauty in your garden so that you want to go there and kind of work with the plants so it's, it's dual purpose but things like snapdragons apparently are good for pollinators um, the bees also love sunflowers all exciting things and instagram has ruined me because i've been getting a lot of flower farmer uh, content in my feed which i don't think it's a very good use of water resources here in the area so i won't become a flower farmer but it makes me want to plant more flowers in my garden Okay, and then the final thing of flowers, put a label, um, how did you get on with the sorghum? That's a really good question. Um, you might remember a few years ago I was very into growing lots of carbs because I had the energy and the motivation to do that. Um, it was great, the sorghum did really well for us here. And I think it's a very it is it's a plant that doesn't really mind poor soils and heat, and it's much more resilient than corn. Um, like it can take all the. This district is very much one of extreme, so it's kind of cold for Portugal, and then, um, like it, there's always a question of do you have enough water, and then the the summer heat can be very intense. So, oh yeah, Bo. Um, and sorghum can take all that and I always feel like corn for my taste although I'm trying to grow corn this year is a little bit too finicky um, so yeah the the sorghum did really well but then the like the harvesting and the processing and things it took a lot of time um, which I don't really didn't really have at the time or or right now so I will definitely try to grow more sorghum again I think it's a it's I've heard other people say this as well it's a great like home home grain to grow with, with really good um, like get lots from it but yeah just not right now is there a, li a little bit of a side question what would be best way to to start a five to six hectare fruit farm was the most efficient just buy one there's so many people who are retiring now within farming also in this region yeah. just buy one like i said in the fundao region there's lots of great fruit farms some of them are also on youtube so personally i would do that and they also already have the whole industry built around that um I just don't want to be a fruit farmer. Supplies. That's, again, a really good question. What is available, what's not? So that really depends on the area. Like over here, it's really easy to buy like generic seeds. I just bought these at Agriloja. Um, I got these at Agriloja, I think. So seeds is pretty easy. If you want to have more specialty but i think that's in, in all places um like you would have to go online but yeah you you could grow a garden from just seeds from the shop starts are really easy but again like the variety might be lacking depending on your wants and needs and then compost yeah you can over here we <laughs> What people sometimes don't understand is we are pretty much in the middle of nowhere. There's no, I mean, and people do live here, like we're not super isolated, but um, people grow their own stuff, but they don't, they do it the old fashioned way and not the, not the no dig way. And there's no municipal compost. So getting a whole truckload of compost, like you see other YouTubers do, that's not an option here. Like. It literally does not exist. And that's here specifically for our region. So if you want to do no dig, the only way, and some YouTubers that I know who live close here, they don't always show the whole thing, is that you need to get a pallet full of bags with compost. And that's that's literally the only way to do it. And 
personally. Uh, I think that's financially an unwise decision because it's really expensive. And then all the plastic. So I don't do that. Um, but I'm sure it is possible in other parts of Portugal to get municipal compost. Um, just not here specifically in our region. And then mulch, same, same story. It's not really a thing here. Like the arborists don't, well, so, some of them do, um, but it's not so easy to get that kind of stuff here if, if you want to do the trendy way of gardening. So yeah, it just totally depends on how you want to do it. Okay, so as I'm editing this, I realized I never filmed an ending to this video. I didn't get through all the questions, so thank you so much for asking questions. If you have some more, do feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I hope this was helpful. I know that it was a lot and the video is kind of long and a lot of talking, but I, I did want to do... I did want to do this video because I think it will be helpful for uh, hopefully at least some people. I will link the seed companies in the description box down below. <laughs> I don't know how to talk to a camera anymore. Um, so you might have noticed that the coloring on the video kind of changed. Um, that's because as always, or yeah, as always, I'm trying to better my videos and that means that we've got some new gear over Christmas and uh, we got these mics and we got the drone that you saw the footage of and then we also got some um, some little lenses to help with the lighting on the on the cameras uh, we are team G DJI now completely so that's cool um, so yeah, that's also why we take a sponsorship every now and then so that we can pay for those kind of things. Anyway, I hope you appreciate that. Uh, I will be back with more produced videos on what else we are doing on land. And yeah, see you in the next one.